we are going to use the learner corpora to understand how languages are learned. We want to use it for pedagogical purposes, that is how to teach a language and also for self-learning. Somebody wants to learn on their own. There also again we can use this corpora to identify. So let's go on to the next slide, but you can we can come back to the earlier ones if you have any questions. If you if I get any questions from you, I'll come back to the earlier slides and explain some part of it again to you. So corpus linguistics is not anything new, but it has been there and it was not quite popular earlier because storing all this data and recording it and keeping it in shape and uh, putting it in proper files and all that was very difficult without the computer. So it was not so much used earlier, but now with the computerized facility that's available to us, we are able to use it for better uses. So now it's used for, used by researchers and educators and learners for self-learning. How do researchers use it? They use it for to understand the theoretical and pedagogical issues. How is a language learned? How can a language be taught? These are the pedagogical issues they discuss. And educators try to find, identify the learner's needs. They prepare teaching materials. So some of these educators may prepare self-learning materials. They also use this learner's corpora for preparing such materials, understanding the needs of the learners. And learners use it for self-learning materials. I will show you a video. You might have watched that video. I sent you the link to the video in the PPT. You might have watched it already. And there it is shown that how learners use it for self-learning purposes or what are the possibilities of using it for self-learning purposes. Coming back to this definition of learner's corpora, you can see it's an electronic collection of learner data, but not just any data. If you look at the internet, you know, you will get, I mean, a vast amount of data. Not all of them will be useful to us as a learner corpora. So here this data has to be authentic. So it has to be authentic first language or second language. It should be textual data. It should be explicit design criteria for a particular second language acquisition or first language training purposes, teaching purposes. So you, they use this data either for teaching first language learners their own language or for second language acquisition. And these are authentic material, not artificial data that you can collect from a school classroom or anything, but natural language that is used in real life situation. And they're encoded in a standardized and homogeneous way. So once you put in the data, the label you give for the data should be the same, homogeneous. Okay, the data has to be labeled in a proper manner for the anybody to use it. So if it is uh, inter-language acquisition, inter-language errors, for example, they have to label it in a proper way. Um, over generalization. So which are the over generalization errors? All of them have to be put together in a common format. Then only you will be able to access it. And documented as to their origin and provenance. So where was this used? Where was this data used in this particular manner that is going to be documented also? So that you get an idea of how this data was obtained and which province, which place and so on. Then only the data will be useful to you. How do they tag this data? So you put this in the computer and you give it parts of speech tagging. This is one type of tagging or according to the error, say there is an error in the article, then that is tagged in that manner. So all the article errors will be together in one place. And when you search for it, you will get the list of errors together. Semantic tagging, according to the meaning, okay, it's put together. Or discursal tagging or parsing. So it's a context, context is given, a conversation or a written paragraph. And in the discourse, the whole discourse is tagged according to the, this thing. And this linker or connector is not properly used here. Or it is used in a special way here. This is tagged in the learner's data. Okay, let's go on to the next one. And what is 
the use? Why should we put in, collect all this data? The data will be a, a vast amount of data is collected and a lot of effort is put in to tag it, properly categorize it and put it in place. So why are we doing all this? Why should, how do we use it? What are we going to do with this data? So in describing learner language, we can use this. So somebody says this form is most often used. Somebody says, no, no, why form is most often used. How do you decide? You have objective data here. Using this data, you'll be able to find out which form is used, how it is used, and what we can do with it. And in identifying learner errors and interlanguage, this data is used. From a pedagogical perspective, research into learner corpora has led to this creation of these tools, EFL tools, electronic language learning and production environment tool. This is one self-learning material prepared by uh, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. So many people have prepared self-learning materials based on this learner corpora. And such EFL tools or electronic pedagogic system that is you are learning something somebody is teaching something to you using this electronic media that's why they are called the electronic pedagogical system that's designed to assist assist learners in improving lexical grammatical and discourse aspects of their reading and writing in English that's how they are using this learner corpora so what is interlanguage in the earlier slide we mentioned okay if you remember here we mentioned in identifying learner errors and interlanguage. So this was mentioned here. So we are describing in the next slide what is interlanguage. And one second, please. Why should we use interlanguage? I'm going to continue now. Any questions so far? If you have any questions, you can type it in the Google chat or you can. I have even made audio this thing enabled for you, but I don't know. You may have problems there because of your setup or the computer programs that you have there. So we are talking about the interlanguage here. We are using the learner corpora for one specific purpose in identifying learner errors and interlanguage. That's one of the uses of uh, learner corpora. So in the next slide, you are going to see what is interlanguage. Your mother tongue is Gujarati. You are learning English as the second language. You cannot get native speaker competence in English right in the beginning. So in between, you create for yourself a language which is intermediary between Gujarati and English. That's called the interlanguage. Okay. So anybody who is, this is the first language, it may be French, it may be Marathi, it may be Gujarati, it may be any language here. And all of you are learning a second language here. Whoever learns a second language, they are going to prepare an interlanguage, intermediary language. It's called interlanguage because it is in between the first language and the second language. It, the part of this system for this language, it's a complete system, it's a proper language and part of the system matches Gujarati, part of the system matches English. That's why it's called a language. It has a system, but it's intermediary language. It's not a complete language in itself, but it's the intermediary language that's between the first language Gujarati in this case, and second language, English. So if you want to learn more about interlanguage, I have given you the link here, teachingstylesonline.com slash interlanguage.html. If you go to this site, okay, you will be able to read more about interlanguage, what are the definitions of interlanguage, and what the selinkers say about interlanguage, five parts of interlanguage, and so on. For our purpose today, we need to understand that Learner corpora is used for identifying this interlanguage. What is the system behind this language? That's one of the uses of learner corpora.